What's up guys and welcome back to the channel where we learn, do, and talk about outdoor photography until we're sick of it. And today I've got a timely treat because we're going to look at the all new Canon EOS R7. This is a rugged, high resolution, fast shooting APS-C mirrorless camera that's basically purpose built for the type of photography that I do on this channel. So I know it's probably on the radar of a lot of you guys at home as a potential purchase. Especially because it packs some of the most impressive features of any camera in this price point. Which, as a long time Canon shooter, certainly comes as a welcome change of pace. Also, hopefully it's inside this box because I just picked it up from the camera store. So throughout the month on this channel, we'll be putting the R7 through its paces in both the wildlife and landscape photography use cases. That was a poem. But today I mostly just wanted to get the camera out of the box, uh, get a feel for it, and draw some initial impressions, putting it to a use that I imagine is pretty well suited for, which is wildlife photography. So on the way home from the camera store, I've stopped at one of my favorite locations to photograph summer waterfowl to get the R7 out into the marsh and see if it makes a splash. So while I'm setting up the camera, I'll tell you a little bit about my use case for it. The, the, uh, the R7 is my second camera. Uh, it supplements my, uh, my EOS R, which is my primary stills camera, the, the camera that's recording me now. And I've been a two camera shooter for several years, especially since I've wanted to incorporate uh, more promotional video content into what I do, promotional and educational video content like this YouTube video. So the R7 replaces the M6 Mark II, which was the previous camera that I put to that purpose. The M6 Mark II was a fantastic second camera. I absolutely loved it. It was really small and hard to accidentally leave at home for those times when you suddenly realize you're out shooting and you need another camera. Uh, the video quality I was very satisfied with for purposes like these YouTube videos, but um, lately I've been picking up more uh, professional work for clients and the quality of the video was just not quite suitable for that. And that's where I was able to justify the purchase of the R7. It has some fantastic, almost professional grade uh, video features that are going to let me uh, provide a higher quality product to my video clients. My second camera has also been my go-to camera for, for wildlife photography because the EOS R uh, is great for landscapes but it's a little slow and not, not particularly well suited to wildlife and so uh, the M6 Mark II also kind of let me down in that regard because it had some, some quirks that I don't want to get into complaining about but some quirks with the autofocus uh, using adapted lenses like this uh, EF 100 to 400 millimeter lens that I'm shooting with today. And I'm hoping that the R7 is going to have a little bit more dependable autofocus behavior. We'll find out here in shooting. So I'll come out to the march today to shoot some, it looks like we have some egrets out. Uh, it's a beautiful day outside for getting out with the camera. And uh, we'll see if we can get some of these egrets to comply. This is probably not a great scenario to really showcase what the camera can do because the birds are really far away. In fact, I've got the 1.4 teleconverter mounted up as well. But this will, I think, be a great test of the autofocus because the subjects are very small in the frame and they're hidden behind marshes. So we'll see um, how predictable and dependable the autofocus is on small distant subjects like these egrets. First, I've got to figure out how to turn off this darn camera beep. This is really remarkable. So um, hopefully you can see this. I've, the autofocus system is, lets me put this square. It looks for a subject within the square. So all I have to do is put the subject in the square and look how small, not only does it recognize that there's a subject there, but it detects that it's an animal, locks onto it and tracks it. You see now it even caught the eye of that bird. It even knows to look for the head. Now you can see sometimes it's missing. We'll see how close those are. It wants the grass in those shots. Now, now it's found the head of the animal, and there it got the eye. I can't believe how small that focus box is. Focus has been incredible 
especially based on my experience coming from older cameras like the dual pixel autofocus version one cameras, the, the EOS R, the EOS M6 Mark II, and especially compared to DSLRs, which don't have any of these incredible intelligent features. Not only uh, is it giving me a lot of flexibility with where I want to place the subject in the frame, and the joystick is working seamlessly for putting uh, that box in the correct area with lots of flexible options for uh, the size of the box and those types of things, but also it's really great at detecting when something, uh, wind, when something in the frame is, is of interest to me and when it's just uh, background or it's even actually pretty good when there are multiple animals in the frame of detecting uh, which animal is the most interesting. Maybe it just chooses the closest, I don't know. But, uh, and also I, I, I only see that it's identifying the subject. I can't really tell on the camera whether it's correctly focusing on that subject. You guys will see that uh, in the images that I post uh, in the video. So um, tell me what you think in the comments. So another improvement that this camera offers is a stabilized sensor. This is the first APS-C camera that Canon has offered with a stabilized sensor. Uh, one of the only cameras in its entire lineup with a stabilized sensor with only a few more that you, this is certainly the cheapest camera, Canon camera you can get uh, with a, a IBIS, so in-body image stabilization. So I'm gonna take the camera off the tripod now and do some handheld photography and videography and see how well that works. Now I can't use it, I can't turn off uh, the lens stabilization. It works in conjunction with the IBIS, so you can only see the effect of both, but um, we'll, we'll uh, get the camera off and see how steady these shots look at 400 millimeters uh, with the 1.4 teleconverter and the crop sensor. So the camera claims to have this egret in focus. Oh my. Now, it would have been good to have the gimbal for that little piece there, but um, this is about how steady, as steady as I can get the footage here at 400 millimeters with the lens and in-body image stabilization. Now I'm gonna pop it into the uh, 4K 60 crop mode for a super duper duper telephoto challenge. Okay, well you see we got a little extra purchase on that bird. That's nice. Now keep in mind I am talking while I'm taking this footage. I'll, I'll be silent for a second. Now that is about as steady as I can get the shot. You can see it's Still fairly wobbly, not exactly tripod mode. And just for kicks, I'll turn on the electronic stabilization, which I don't typically like to use. We're now using the enhanced electronic stabilization. I should mention it's very windy as well. And that is about as good as I, as I can do with this thing. Actually, let's flip the stabilizer off <laughs> and all the uh, electronic stabilization and just get a look at what you're working at, what the camera is doing for us here. Impressively, it is still identifying the bird in this shot. Okay, so now you've had a look at it. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about the stabilization. This was like a murder use case. Uh, 400 millimeters with the extender, the crop sensor, the, the uh, additional crop in 4K60, and the, uh, some additional crop on top of that for the, um, the uh, electronic image stabilizer. So, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Tell me what you think. Lastly, we'll take a look at the buffering and burst rate. This was the high speed continuous. We'll see how many shots that was when I edit the video together. Uh, I, I was keeping my finger pressed on the shutter even after that last one, which was a, a buffering uh, uh, shot that it was recording uh, while the buffer was clearing. And then in that long pause afterwards was still with my finger pressed on the shutter. We never got to a second buffered shot. So, and uh, just so you know, this, 
This is the card I was writing to. It's uh, uh, one of these, these are super common cards, these Lexar 128 gigabyte uh, UHS-2 cards. It's the 1667X 250 megabyte per second card. So not the best card you can get, uh, but an affordable, uh, reasonably fast card uh, that, that I think someone shopping for a camera in this price point would probably be shopping for. Okay, uh, I'm not gonna do any more tests on the uh, R7 today. Really just wanted to get it out, try it out, and get a feel for it, like I said. So there'll be more extensive and in-depth and scientific controlled situation testing on the camera coming up later on the channel. So uh, be sure you guys subscribe so you can have a look at that when that comes down the pipe. But until I see you next time, you keep an eye out and a foot forward, and thank you so much. Okay, sorry, I hadn't intended to do this, but <laughs> after reviewing the footage that I made in the field, I decided there were a few things worth uh, clarifying and elaborating on. So I just want to touch on a few things, questions you probably already have and would have left in the comments anyway. Uh, first, regarding equipment, um, <laughs> the camera itself uh, is notoriously hard to get a hold of right now. You can't order it off of uh, Amazon in the body-only configuration. Um, and I know that I had a pre-order in at B&H for over a month, uh, and they sent me an email last week saying, we, we basically don't know when we're going to get it in. So um, uh, it seems like the people that are getting the camera are having success at local camera stores, and that's how I got mine. So I want to thank my friends at Robert's Camera Use Photo Pro in Indianapolis for helping me acquire the camera and making my trade-in seamless by giving me a top dollar on my M6 Mark II trade-in. So also in regards to equipment, I made that footage using the uh, Mark II, the EF Mark II teleconverter, not the Mark III. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're, if you're really looking at the image quality, I really wasn't trying to test the image quality. I was trying to test the, um, the behavior and the feel of the camera. And speaking of the feel, I thought the camera uh, felt really great but um, I think it's worth noting that it is a smaller camera, so if you're coming from uh, a full-frame camera, you'll probably find this to be somewhat small in the hands, and that may be good or bad depending on your needs. Um, it's also lacking some of the um, creature comforts that you might be used to from, honestly, even cameras that are that are a lower price point than this, so there's no uh, top information screen, there's no uh, locking mode dial, and uh, most notably, there are only two exposure control dials. So um, this has got like my least favorite implementation for ISO control, which is like you push the button and then you use one of the wheels to change your ISO and then you push the button again to get back out of the ISO menu. So it's, uh, it's frustratingly slow if you're a manual shooter and you're shooting uh, fast moving subjects like wildlife. So uh, that was one frustration I had, but uh, generally the, the, the ergonomics of the camera work good for me, but um, I do tend to prefer a smaller camera. Okay, so for stabilization, like I said in the field, this was like a worst case uh, scenario um, with lots of uh, magnification leveraging against the uh, stabilizer. So um, I, I didn't think the camera did that bad, but there was some jitter. I don't think I said clearly enough like just how windy it was. It was extremely windy. And so on the panning shots where I was uh, tracking um, on the on the gimbal head those went really smooth but as soon as I parked the gimbal the, the shot got shaky again so uh, probably with a little more care balancing uh, would be required so something for me to keep in mind when I'm using the camera in the future um, but also the, uh, it was clear that the wind was uh, really affecting the stabilization but also in reviewing the footage I could see that in the recording modes that I was using the, the, there was a significant rolling shutter that was also exacerbating the uh, stabilization of the footage. So I don't think that'll be so much of a problem at standard focal lengths or in the standard 4K recording mode. But I didn't try that mode to see if the rolling shutter was improved. But I will be testing that out in future tests. So be sure you're subscribed if you'd like to see a more specific result regarding stabilization, rolling shutter, and the uh, different recording modes. And lastly, for autofocus, this was probably the thing that I was most interested in. I was really pleased to see that the camera uh, w was great at acquiring a subject and also great at sticking on the subject. So uh, one example that was noteworthy was when uh, I was uh, just doing some a pretty easy shot of egrets in the marsh and two ducks flew in front. And uh, that's something that previous cameras I've had would have struggled with, um, at least wanting to try to latch onto that different subject once it came into the frame. Uh, the R7 was not even tempted to get off of the subject that it had selected. Um, for the panning sequence, um, I think I got eight, eight to ten uh, bursts in a panning sequence, and out of those, there was only one that was very slightly out of focus, so I would say that's a very good hit rate for birds in flight. And um, it's also worth mentioning that 
these weren't birds in flight against a blue sky, right? This was against a really busy background where previous cameras I've had would have been tempted to uh, jump off the focus, jump off the uh, subject and onto the background. Um, I didn't sense any of that. And also I didn't continuously track the subjects um, for the entire shot. I would take a, a burst of a few shots and then reacquire focus again and take a burst and reacquire focus again and take a burst, right? So I think the camera probably would have done even better if I were continuously doing one um, focus track um, uh, but instead, every time it went to acquire focus, it jumped right onto the birds every time. And then probably the biggest challenge that I put the camera to was um, was some shots with some heavy foreground obstruction. I don't expect the camera to work magic and like it, I noticed that there's something behind something else. Um, but any other camera I used would have been that would have been a manual focus only shot, whereas this camera was able to get uh, some uh, the majority actually of the shots uh, in focus even though the subject was obstructed as soon as the bird's eyeball came out from behind the obstruction the camera identified the subject and uh, locked focus onto it and then if the bird went back behind more obstructions the camera wasn't tempted to come off the bird and onto those foreground obstructions it stayed on the bird what what really impressed me was uh, in these shots uh, the birds were so far away that the eyeball when I looked at it in Lightroom the eyeballs were about uh, 10 pixels across so this is an area of like 75 uh, pixels uh, and out of 33 million pixels right uh, of all kinds of crazy elements everywhere in this scene uh, the camera identified that those 10 pixels were the eyeball of a bird locked onto it and when the camera was able to make that determination when the eyeball was visible I had 100% success rate so um, really high marks for the autofocus system if you're coming from uh, any camera other than a camera that costs thousands of dollars more than this I think you'll be pleasantly surprised okay um, so that's all that I have about the camera like I said there'll be more testing coming up so be sure you're subscribed to the channel to see some more in-depth testing um, and until I see you guys next time you, you keep an eye out and a foot forward and thank you so much for watching